in today's show. What if they did it? What if they finally did it? The Blazers pulled the plug, ended the era, and decided to trade Damian Lillard. What would it look like? How would it happen? And who might the suitors be? Welcome to Locked On Blazers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Trailblazers, your daily Portland Trailblazers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, world? It's your past first point guard and Trailblazers reporter, Mike Richmond. You are listening to another episode of Locked On Blazers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, available wherever you get podcasts and also on YouTube. Thanks for making this show your first listen. Coming at you every single weekday, Monday through Friday. So why don't you make it part of your daily routine? Make it your first listen. Tell your friends to do the same. It's Locked On Blazers, your team every day. In today's show, I'm finally doing it. Let's talk about the Damian Lillard trade. That is going to be the whole episode today. Not that there is one imminent or I even think it's going to happen, but I think we have reached a portion of the Dame era and a sort of a, 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 a juncture in the Damian Lillard era where there is a not insignificant number of Trailblazers fans that are in favor of um, blowing it up, of, of ending the era, trading Dame, starting over, rebuilding, going young, and all of that. And some of this is like just like anecdotal internet stuff. And I know that judging by like what, um, <laughs> I'm going to use nice words. I almost said mean words. What folks who are active on Twitter are saying and people who are, you know, blowing up the YouTube message board. I appreciate you commenting on, on YouTube. If you're watching the show on YouTube, throw a comment in the, in the chat. Why not throw a comment in the, uh, <laughs> spice that algorithm up, uh, throw a comment in the in the thread or under this video rather but like judging judging the sort of the fan base by like what the internet's saying is like not not particularly good way to to sort of judge it's the you know the loudest people make their opinions heard and then whatever it is but like even anecdotally just talking to my friends there are i've you know blazer blazer fan friends who are just like yeah i'm I'm ready let's let's do whatever is next i'm ready for the next part and i think it is a not insignificant number i don't think it's an unpopular opinion it might still be like the slight like not a plural plurality or whatever but it's like it is it is there is out there so what i want to do in today's show is i want to talk about kind of the why the how the when the what the big sort of questions around the trade so let's start with why then we'll talk about how and i think there are some some hurdles to be jumped here with with it i don't think it's as simple as it once was i think even like the specific timing of this summer and the new cba makes it difficult we'll talk about that in the second segment and then kind of look at what it what it could look like to close the show like the the sort of the specifics of what a, a, a dame trade could look like but let's start with the why um, because I think the why, while it's like the most obvious, I think it's worth parsing and worth just like let's let's like lay it out there in 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 in, in plain terms. The reason that you trade Damian Lillard is because you know that it's time. You know how this movie ends. If they if they are, Dame wants them to, to choose a path, right? Go young, a path that he wouldn't be involved in or, or go all in and, and be aggressive and make the, make the big trades to go for it. But there is a truth to if trying and attempting to make the big trades to go for it, they might mortgage some of your future to be decent for three seasons, um, that it just ends up with you back in the middle, but with like way light on draft picks and that, 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 that is, um, would be, while maybe like responsible in the way to take care of your franchise icon, irresponsible in the way that you run a basketball team in a non-glamour market that's not going to factor into free agent decisions for the most part. So the reason that you trade Damian Lillard is because it's time. It's time. You know that even if you get a bu- enough of the trades somewhat correct, if you don't nail all f- six decisions that you have to make between now and the, and the trade deadline at February, 2024, like six being like kind of just a random number I'm throwing out there. But if you don't nail every decision you have to make along the path, you're going to come up short and you're going to be light on draft picks and all those things. You know, it's time, you know how this ends. This is, a, it's too hard to go from where they were as a, like a pretty bad team to, to championship contention. And to do that, you have to mortgage the future. It's time. And moreover, you have an intriguing young core. It's a great time to start. You're going into this, um, you're going into this off season with, uh, you know, the the lottery is next week, so we'll be able to talk about specifically what pick they have. But like, 
a 10 and a half percent chance of getting a franchise changer, but if not like a, a totally, you know, a 90% chance of landing in the top seven picks in the draft and like having, having a, a, a useful young part to add, you've got the 23rd pick in the draft from the New York Knicks. Um, eventually you're going to, you're going to make the playoffs and get your picks back from the bulls or be able to figure that out at some point into the future. Like, you know, trade somebody to say trade, trade, trade Dame to Chicago to get your pick back or whatever. Like, um, it's, uh, that's a joke by the way, but uh, like you, you have this intriguing young core with all these draft picks. Plus Shane Sharp looks like he's going to be a player. Every Simons has, when he's had opportunity to play without Damian Lillard has looked, you know, really darn good. Maybe not like Dame's level, but that's a level few get to, but like a, a, a star, right? Like, a, like someone who could be um, a, a darn good starting point guard in the league. Um, like, or at least like worth finding out if he could be a darn good starting point guard in the league. Cause he's 23, like, um, it, and it could grow and be all of those things, right? Like you've got this intriguing core, you've got, picks and it's so hard to get from where you are to where you want to go and you would trade Dame because it's time and you would get a haul back and that haul could help inform you and Damon Lord's 32 years old coming off the best season of his career at most he has something like four more seasons of being an all NBA level player uh that would be like generous right like for sure, I don't think that's out of the question, but like that's that's the long tail is four four more seasons, and you could just you can as as shout out to basketball Gabe he of the uh, Rip City Report fame for those of you who are longtime Blazers podcast listeners basketball Gabe first existed as a person of lore in the Rip and then the Rip City Report podcast, but I play hoops with him too. Basketball Gabe like says I'd rather at this point them sell me hope, and the Blazers are positioned to move off Damian Lillard and sell hope with Shaden, with Avery Simons, with whoever they get in the lottery, with, um, you know, with whoever they might get in the 23rd, with a 23rd pick, with future picks, with um, whatever they could build with, say it's Cam Reddish, and, or they bring Matisse Thibel back, or, or, or whatever it might be with, with the youngsters. Say they hold on to Kevin Knox and, and figure out what that is, and, um, and, they, and they pivot to a youth movement. I think they have a path back to being decent and getting back to the middle and being like a low-level play-in team very quickly. I think they already have that type of... T I think with Ant and Shane Sharp and a couple other of the right moves, getting back to being like a, a low-level, like the t ninth or 10th best team in the West is easy. It's easy, not not even difficult. It's the other steps that are way difficult that I think the Damian Lillard era has proven. But the why you trade Dame is because this is a wonderful time to do so, and Dame is as coming off the season as good as he's been, as good as he's been. His I don't think his trade value is particularly high. It's what we're going to talk about next, like in terms of like in the grand scheme of trading superstars. But it's never going to be higher right now. It doesn't get better from here. So why you do it now? Why you pull the plug this summer? is because this is the time to pivot. This is the time to choose the future. This is the time to make a, a the responsible choice because the irresponsible choice, while it might be the right thing to do, and I think there's some sort of existential um, considerations of like what is right by Damian Lillard, but like the, the responsible thing, if you're sort of running a cold-blooded basketball franchise is to trade him and collect assets and move on to the future. And I think there are a lot of basketball fans, shout out to Nate Duncan, who believe in that sort of cold um, asset management, maximize what you can, build, build in this wholly responsible way. I think it is unquestionably the responsible move. The right move, I don't even like want to get into that area. But is the, is it, if you're building a team that is located in Portland, Oregon, it's the most responsible move to always sort of try to build through the draft. And when it doesn't work to pull the plug again and build through the draft again, right? Like that is, that is sort of like asset management dunked on 101. And the Blazers are in a position to sort of reset that now. That's the why. The next is the how. How do you trade Dame? What's it look like? That's what we'll talk about in the second segment. But before I do that, I want to tell you about game time. If you're trying to go to a Blazer game or you're trying to go to a concert over the, over this summer, and you're stressed out about getting tickets, how much they're going to cost, where you're going to sit, if they're going to be sold out. Don't stress out because game time is your spot for last minute 
tickets. You don't need to plan months in advance. They got deals right up to the day of the events, and you can get exclusive flash deals for all the sporting events you want to go to, to concerts, to comedy shows, to theater, and a whole bunch more. And the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. So if you find tickets in the same section, the same row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. And you can get images of your seats before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect. What's the what's the view gonna look like when I'm when I'm out there at Red Rocks? Click on it and look, and then you can buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Two taps and you're all set. So snag tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use a code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first order. Terms apply. Again, create an account, use the redemption code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Still a pass first point guard. I usually do that in the third segment. All right. Screwed up the intro, but we're still rolling along. We talked about the why you would trade Dame. I think the why is obvious, but I wanted to lay out the why because I think like, um, I think most people get it, but I want, I want the logic to be there. It's kind of how I structure the podcast. Uh, just like in general, the sort of my larger, uh, the larger ecosystem of the podcast. So I want to make sure this episode followed that sort of, um, followed, the, followed how we generally do things here. Keep the logic straightforward. Next is the how. How do you trade Dave? It isn't as simple as it seems. I think there are a variety of hurdles that make a Damian Lillard trade not as simple as I don't know, put the feelers out there. Real quick, like, I don't think Dame is good. There's not going to be a, a situation in where Damian Lillard, like, publicly demands a trade. We had that, right? That was in the summer of 2021. Dame kind of bristled with the uh, front office then. There was even a report from Drew Hoop that he was about to ask a trade. And then Damian Lillard denied the trade rumor and said, I haven't made up my mind what, what my future will be while he was under contract for three years. I, that's not a trade demand, but it ain't. it's not nothing. He also met with LeBron James and Anthony Davis that summer and, and like clearly considered asking for a trade to the Lakers. We've been there. I don't think that's this. He is... He is First of all, he's got the security of a, of, of a $100 million contract extension. He's kind of like... Um, had the Zen moments of two down years, the, the you know, Neil Olshay's been fired, like it's a, it's a new regime, all those things. I don't think it's going to come up as a big, like, big public trade demand. And that's, I don't think that happens. It's either going to come up quietly where Dame tells the front office behind the scenes or kind of ham-fistedly when Chris Haynes reports it. It's, <laughs> those are the two options. But it won't be... Um, it, it's not going to be like a, it's not going to be the blow up of the summer of 2021. It's not going to be that way. So it, it's not going to come out publicly. So it would come out privately, but even if it comes out privately and it is a, the worst kept secret in the NBA, all of a sudden it starts to be like the, you know, um, the sort of brokers, news brokers of the league are using league sources and rival executives and monitoring the situation and all that, um, stuff, all that jargon. I was about to say a bad word there too. I was about to say a mean word in the first segment. So I'm about to say a bad word in the second segment. It's um, don't record at night. Y'all this is a locked on blazers after dark. The sun has set, but I think in general, there will be a limited number of suitors because even if it's obvious that Dame is out there, it's not going to be, there's not going to be 29 teams making the call. For a couple different reasons. One, sort of the usual suspects already, um, you know, spent spent their wad. Like the Knicks got Jalen Brunson last summer. Um, the Brooklyn Nets, who are maybe primed to acquire Dame, like the guy that Dame would want to play with, Mikael Bridges, is the piece you would want back in a Dame trade. It doesn't. That's not that easy. Um, Miami, the team that's he's been linked to a bunch. What are they going to trade? Tyler freaking Hero for Damian Lord? No, 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 no. The Blazers have a better version of that on the roster already. Um, like maybe not as good at Instagram, but like better at basketball. So they don't, it's, it's just, it's unappealing. So th th that's sort of like the usual suspect suitors, the LA teams, like I, the Lakers have no way to do it. Um, and the Clippers, um, like what, what would the Clippers give up? If the Clippers called and offered Paul George, that's not what the Blazers want out of a Damian Lillard trade. And I think that's an important part of the how, if the Blazers are to trade Dame, they probably don't want like a all-star for all-star swap. They want to go young. They want to turn the keys over to Anthony Simons and Shaden Sharp. They want to, they want to haul the draft picks. So you're looking not for like the sort of usual suspects or maybe a team that could say all-star for all-star type of swap, but teams with a haul of a haul of picks. Plus Dame is a go for it piece. 
He is not a build piece. He has said himself he's not interested in anything that's building. He wants to go for it. So the team acquiring him has to be a team that's going for it, that needs a 32-year-old, ball-dominant, best offensive player in the NBA or one of the five best offensive players in the NBA. We need to give him the ball and go score. A lot of teams could use that, but you don't see teams that are like on the, on the, like I don't, when I look, when I scan the horizon, a team that's sort of on that cusp of like, we could be, we could be close. We have the sort of chips to cash in or we, or, or at least like we, we are a Damian Lillard away from being a team that could win a championship. I like not that Dame couldn't help a bunch of teams get a whole lot better in a hurry, but like the specific, like we are going to trade for Damian Lillard and he's going to put us over the top. That list is short, is short. Plus the Blazers are likely to acquiesce Dame's request. So they're not going to trade him to Oklahoma city because Oklahoma city has the best package. Like it's not going to be a DeMar DeRozan to the Spurs thing because there is no Kawhi Leonard and the Blazers are not the 2018, 2019 Raptors in which they're like, we've been to the Eastern conference finals, you know, three of the last four years, give us fricking or whatever it was, what the Raptors had been, you know, a second round playoff team multiple years in a row. It's like, we just need someone to take us over the top. We need someone to get us there. That's not the cycle that the Blazers are in. They're not going to say, "Okay, hey, sorry, dog, we have to trade you to to San Antonio for because they don't they don't want that." Like if they go this direction, they're going young and they're going young aggressively. So they're going to ask acquiesce Dame, right? Like if he wants to go to Miami, they'll probably make something around that work. If he wants to go to Brooklyn, they'll probably make something around that work. Chicago, whatever it might be, right? Like they'll probably make that work. However, and here's another hurdle that I think is an important hurdle. The new CBA goes into effect when Damian Lord can be traded, when the new league year begins on July 1st, or I guess it technically begins like 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Eastern time on June 30th. But let's call it July 1st. When the new league year starts on July 1st, the new CBA is going to be in effect. And there is a new, there are more punitive measures for teams that are spending a bunch of money. So if you are above... Um, this, there's like, I don't want to get too deep into the jargon, but there's a line, there's a, there's a tax threshold that is, there's a first tax threshold. There's a second tax threshold that if you're above that second threshold, above that second line, you have limited ways to improve your team. You can't use the taxpayer mid-level exception, which is like a contract that you could sign for, for use for in free agency to sign someone. You can't make trades where you take in more money than you, um, than you give out. You can't like, there are, the league is trying to artificially spread talent wider across more teams. Um, is it a good idea? I don't know. We'll see how it works, but it's certainly the move. So the sort of like the crazy spenders of the world, right? Like the the Steve Ballmers and the and, uh, and the Milwaukee group and, and, and Golden State where it's like, um, we'll spend whatever it takes and just pay because the money doesn't matter and just pay. The league is pushing you to not do that because it'll be harder to field a good team if you get too expensive. You're going to have to make your decision on who you pay more judiciously and then after you've made that decision, then you'll have to trade DeAndre Ayton to another team because you're too expensive. Um, sorry, Matt Ishbia. But like that factor alone makes trading for Damian Lillard, who has a whole bunch of money left on his contract and still is, you know, in in, a, in two years away from a from a two year, 35 percent of the cap max kicking in like. It is a teams that are going for it are going are need to go for it immediately because the the sort of the financial challenges of building a, a team you know even th two seasons down the road gets a lot harder and just acquiring dame might put because he's making you know 45 million dollars a year or whatever like because he's making in, in that 40 plus superstar range your team's gonna be expensive and if your team's really expensive it is now harder to get good and i think that brings us up to like so that's like the how. I think there are real hurdles. That is not to say that Damian Lord wouldn't have suitors on the market. It is just to say that he has a limited number of suitors because he's a specific win now piece. There are financial hurdles that exist. And because the and because the Blazers are not going to just take the best deal, they're probably going to acquiesce Dame to some, ex, to some extent because uh, they have a good relationship if it goes that way. And the like sort of usual suspects, but like specifically the New York Knicks is what I'm thinking of here. They've got their star point guard. It wouldn't make sense for them to punt on how good Jalen Brunson has been to go for, for Dame, right? Like they're going to move, they're going to move in another way. The, the LA teams are not in that, not necessarily in that position either. So it's like, 
there are real hurdles. So what the heck would it look like? That's what I want to talk about to close the show. What the, what the heck would it look like? That's what we'll do. But first, I want to tell you about Prize Picks. It's daily fantasy made easy. I play Prize Picks on the app, but you can also play it on your mobile, or excuse me, on prizepicks.com if that's what you're into. Just head on over there and get in on the fun. It's how it works is you pick between two and six players per entry. You pick the sport and then you pick over or under the statistical lines set by prize picks. So I play basketball. So it's things like points, rebounds, assists, blocks, and steals. Prize pick sets the lines. I pick over or under those lines and you can win some money. If you're feeling, if you're feeling froggy, you can say, I'm going to get six, all six, right? Six for six, but you don't even have to fill out six. You can say, I'm going to get two out of three. I'm going to get three out of three. I'm going to get four out of five. You set the lines, you set the odds. Prize picks pays you quickly with safe and fast withdrawal. So if you're a first time user, go to prizepicks.com, download the app where you ever get mobile apps, and use the promo code locked on when you do. You'll get a hundred percent deposit match up to a hundred dollars. That means you put in a hundred bucks, they give you a hundred bucks, put in fifty bucks, they give you fifty bucks. It's as simple as that. So why don't you go to prizepicks.com or download the app today and make sure when you do you use that promo code locked on. Still a pass versus point guard, still Mike Richmond, and you are still listening to Locked On Blazers. So what does it look like? I don't think there is an obvious straight across trade to be made that I can see. I have scoured. I am a uh, long time listeners. My everyday listeners will know that I'm not like a big uh, trade machine guy. I'm not a fake trades guy. Um, I'm not out there just making up fake trades. I do not think it is. I don't find it super interesting. I'm not going to go into my whole spiel. I don't find it super interesting, but this is a whole fake trade show, right? We're talking a whole fake trade show. So I don't, well, I, while I like hope to craft here's a trade that could work and when you see the dame trades that are like on um i'm not i won't I won't buzz market them but like some some websites that aren't good <laughs> some bad media websites they're stupid right it's like victor oladipo and tyler hero for damian lillard and sure the heat are like want that level of player and damon and jimmy butler would be really good and the heat are in this great position but like the blazers the blazers do not it's like just not an appealing package for him. You look at Brooklyn. How does Brooklyn, you know, they have a bunch of picks and they have Ben Simmons, but the picks aren't super sexy. And Ben Simmons is one of the worst contracts in the league. You'd have to add. So it's like, okay, Dame is going to be three picks and a swap. That gets you to four. Then you're going to have to give up the Ben Simmons contract. And you're going to have like probably multiple picks to attach to that contract. It's like three years of $37 million remaining on it or at $37 million. It's like, it's it's a hundred million bucks over three seasons. It's like, whew, that's nobody wants that. And I will say that on this very podcast was very much in favor of the Blazers of trading CJ McCollum for Ben Simmons. And boy, was I wrong. Glad that I'm not in charge. All you were lucky. Um, I would say generally speaking, those, you know, those teams that are like dames, like sort of obvious destinations don't have it. Um, the teams that could kind of, I, I, I could see them putting together a package, um, like Toronto, because they could, you know, they could, they could something, some version of OG and OB plus could kind of, could kind of get you there. Um, they owe some first round picks, so they're, they're not perfect. Um, I, I don't think that makes sense. Like I said, like the Lakers aren't really positioned to do so. The Clippers aren't really positioned to do so. Other teams like Memphis, which is like Desmond Bain, plus they've got a haul of picks and some some other picks owed to them by Miami and uh, Golden State. It's like, uh, it's like, the, the, why would why would Memphis need John Morant and Damian Lillard? It's like it doesn't make it just doesn't make sense. It's like a funny team that could really use Damian Lillard. It's kind of like maybe the Pe- New Orleans Pelicans. Um, I I don't see that one happening. So. It, I don't think there's like an obvious straight across trade. So if it happens, it's going to be a funky multi-teamer, right? It's going to be a funky multi-teamer. And so maybe a team like Memphis or a team like New Orleans or a team like Brooklyn or even a team like Houston, the teams with a glut of picks, they say, okay, we're going to get involved and, 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 you know, make, make our move. Right. Um, you know, Memphis and New Orleans are like in a different tier than Brooklyn is. And Houston is like a totally different level. And they might be, they might be a team that like really shakes up the, shakes up the whole field. If they go get James Harden, if they go get James Harden, they want to add other players. It's like that, that is, that's kind of the fun part of the NBA off season is when one, one team kind of really, um, is a disruptor in the space. But I think it's like, it's those types of teams. And then it's like a, 
Indiana and Detroit and Utah and teams that can facilitate, right? And they say, like, give us your bad money. Send us your, send us your Ben Simmons. You're tired. You're weak. You're poor. You're um, giant point guards yearning to not shoot. It's, it, it is those type of, it's like funky type of um, three teamers were like, okay, Draymond Green and Damian Lord are finagling their way to get to Chicago. The way the Chicago has to do this now is they got to trade Zach Levine. Zach Levine gets traded to the New Orleans Pelicans. The New Orleans Pelicans ship CJ McCollum to um, the Utah Jazz. The Utah Jazz say, okay, we'll send Kelly Olynyk. We'll we'll and just to make the money work, uh, like wh- whoever it might be. I was going to say like like Taylor Horton Tucker and and Kelly Olynyk. We'll send them to Portland. The Blazers will end up with five picks. Uh, the the but Utah for their trouble will end up with two first round picks for taking on the CJ McCollum contract. The Pelicans will end up with Zach Levine and Damian Lillard will end up in Chicago and somehow Draymond Green will get there too and it'll be Draymond Demar and then Dame and that's the team that's the Bulls team that will that will go for it and finish with the sixth best record in the Eastern Conference. It's something funky like that. It's something funky that you can't see through the clouds and it's something like okay, um, actually Minnesota's getting back into the mix and they're going to trade Carl Anthony Towns and Carl Anthony Towns makes the money work here for Damian Lord and you move around and all of these things, right? That's the vision for me. Um, I think that sort of like Dame and Draymond decide to go to Chicago thing is like the most realistic sort of behind the scenes type of thing where not specifically Chicago, but like they choose a destination that team moves off one of their stars to get some other stars because they're in a star trade. You can make it a four teamer and kind of like, um, and, and make, make it happen and everybody gets what they want out of it. But just one of those teams ends up with, uh, CJ McCollum or Ben Simmons or one of these sort of large contracts that would make the money work, but is not necessarily appealing in and of itself. Sorry for comparing CJ McCollum to Ben Simmons. Um, just two names on the top of my head when I was getting into the sort of um, trade machine inspiration. So that's, I think that's like the, that's the, how it might work. What I want to close with is, is two things. One, I think some of you in that past have asked me like, Mike, Weigh in. What should they do? Share what your opinion is. And like, I get that this is what this podcast is. I should like have a like deeply held position on this, but I don't know that I do. I do think it is the responsible thing to do would be to reset and go young right now. But I like think pretty wholeheartedly that the idea that going young gets you anywhere but back to the middle, like believing that it gets you beyond that is fine and might be true. And again, it's responsible because it gives you the most opportunities to get out of the middle. But just like rebuilding when rebuilding on it, rebuilding into the unknown is more exciting because of the unknown, not because of the chances to get where you want to go. So I like, I don't know if I'd like totally co-sign on that. What's the point, right? Like not what's the point. I mean, like what are, what are you after? Because if you're trying to be like pretty good, you keep doing it on your team. But if you're trying to like, if you know how this movie ends, you kind of have to be comfortable with, okay, we're going to lose 50 games next year or whatever it is. Or maybe they, you know, maybe they, um, are, are like 500 because they're scrappy, but like, we're going to be mediocre for a little bit. And then we're going to hope that the cycle works and we get there and that, and when, and when Anthony Simons is 26 years old, he's a star in this league. Like he's a star, star, star in this league. And, and Shaden Sharp is not far behind him or vice versa, like whatever it is, except Sharp does it at 23. Um, like, I, I think there is, I think there's reason to be more lean into the hope, but I don't think if I, I don't, I don't sit here and confidently say that's the way to go. I know that there is a world in which they cash in a bunch of tr- ch- trade chips and build a veteran team around Dame that just isn't very good. And that I mean to them on this podcast, I know that that is a world. So I think like, if you, you know, if whatever truth serum me, I think that I probably do lean that it's time to go young and rebuild, but I don't feel that very deeply in my bones. If you want to know my truth, like I don't, I don't think that that is like unquestionably the correct way. I think it is probably the most responsible way. If you're trying to build a good team, if you're trying to be as good as possible over the next five seasons, I feel like that probably leads you to your highest possible ceiling but it's certainly the floor is way freaking lower in that situation um and i think that's just the truth 
The other part is that I don't think they will trade Dame. And I think I said that up front, but I want to be clear here. Like, uh, if you are an everyday listener, shout out to my everydayers. Uh, like, I did a who stays and who goes, and I put 91% on Dame. Like, I'm a, I've am ai been a believer for, I don't know, a month or so, however long ago that was, six weeks, uh, five weeks. When did, the se- when did the season end? What day is it? More, a little over a month, uh, like, that I thought they weren't going to trade Dame. It seemed pretty clear that, like, the signals they were sending and the sort of the I'm not going to pretend to be super plugged in, but the, the, the sort of public send, signals they were sending and a little bit of insider knowledge I have, it seemed like they were for sure not, not they were going to give it a go with Dame. They were going to let him, um, they, were going to, they were going to let him have what he wants, which is a chance to truly go for it. Now, they might not. All of this, so much of this hinges on the lottery. Like if they get lucky, um, I'll, I'll share this story. I was out at a place in my neighborhood getting a, an alcoholic beverage with my wife and, uh, and and our small child. And I saw someone who works for the Blazers and we were kind of shooting the shit. And um, oops, I did swear at the end of this podcast. My bad. Sorry, families who are listening. Um, but, I, but and they were like, uh, you know, kind of just talking or whatever. And they were like, well, what if we get lucky in, in, the, in 10 days? And I was like, you can't, don't put that out there. You know, don't put that out there. Um, but like, that's it, right? Like that's what's bubbling around in Blazerland is like, what if they get lucky? And I think if, if the Victor Wembanyama thing comes up, if they get Vic, like you keep Dame, you go for it with this generational talent and you build it to what's next. But if you don't, then like that's the time, that's when the clock starts. You have the fourth pick in the draft, whatever it is. Let's call it the third pick in the draft. You have the third pick in the draft. You have Amphrey Simons. Can you get a trade that works? And if you don't, then you really consider what the Dame trade looks like. But I think they will first look to Ant plus the third pick in the draft. What does that look like? Um, I think there's a world in which they trade Shaden Sharp. I, I really do. I think it's. I think obviously they're going to want to hold on to him over over Simons just because of the, how how the money works and and like Ant is their special find at seven. But like, um, yeah, I I think you they'll try to find the trade without Dame and try to go his route. And then if they don't, they'll have that real serious conversation, which I think they've been very clear. Dame has been very clear about. Um, that's kind of what it, what it's going to take this summer. Uh, I don't think they're going to trade Damian Lillard. I don't think they're going to. You know, I don't think they're going to trade for a superstar either, like to pair next to him. I'm curious to see what happens because the way that the CBA is pushing teams to make decisions that could impact the Blazers because other teams could have to say we literally do have to trade DeAndre Ayton now. Like we straight up have to get rid of him because it's too expensive. That factors into it. Like that is going to, there are so many sort of ripple effects of that type of thing. And I think that's fascinating. So I think Dame's going to be on the team. Um, I think it's okay to say you're, you want the era to go another way. And I think it's okay to say, no, give him one more real shot. Like, I think both of those positions are real. I was hoping to, what I was hoping to lay out in this episode is like the logic behind how, why it would work the certain way and how it would work. Um, it, it would be a massive trade. And like, is Damon Lord's trade value? Is it three picks plus a pick swap? Is it four picks plus a pick swap? And I'll say this, it depends on who you're trading him to and for what. It depends on what the other team wants, because if the other team is dead set on Damian Lillard, the price goes up. But if but if you are dead set on on, you know, the leverage and the context of each trade is unique. Um, I think some big trades like the Rudy Gobert trade set the market, but what you got for this superstar only helps start the negotiating. It doesn't change what's it doesn't inform what's next. So like. I think like looking at the Donovan Mitchell trade and looking at the Kevin Durant trade, both trades that happened last summer, they're a good starting point for what Dame is, but Dame isn't Kevin Durant and Donovan Mitchell is 10 years younger than him. So he's, it's, they're not perfect comparisons, right? They're just not perfect comparisons. It's, it is a, it's a fascinating market. Um, I, you know, obviously he's really freaking good and would, and there would be people who would pay a lot to have him on their team, but it'd be, take a specific team and then it'll, it'll be, um, and I don't think it's a thing the Blazers will um, are. I don't think it's something that the Blazers will necessarily entertain. But I'll tell you what, in house for the Blazers, they're entertaining hope. So I'll I'll leave you with this. If Blazers employees are out there being hopeful, they're out there thinking, what if we get Victor Wembanyama? Be hopeful. What if they get Victor Wembanyama? What if they do trade for that second superstar and, and Dame gets gets the ring and we get the parade down Broadway and all of those things? Be hopeful because. This next step, what we talked about in this episode, the the trade dame is is it will be even if it's the right thing to do, it will be sad. 
it'll be sad. It'll be a sad end to the era, and it'll be it'll be something that um, I think a lot of people will be rightfully emotional about. So for now, let's hold on to hope, hold on to belief. Blazers are about to get lucky, and we won't have to visit all of this superstar trade nonsense that I just wasted. Not wasted, that I just gave a, a glorious half hour to you. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you soon. Wait, before we before I sign off, fun shows the rest of the week. We got Listener Summit coming. Uh, a couple listeners or three listeners are going to join me on the program. Uh, if you want to get involved in a future Listener Summit, I'll talk about it on that particular show. We'll do probably uh, probably do one over the summer as well, maybe into free agency. So uh, stay tuned for that. And then Friday show, we're going to talk about the G League with someone who works in the G is going to tell us kind of what it might operate like for the Trail Blazers. It's going to be a whole bunch of fun. Come back five days a week, wherever you get podcasts. Make your first listen. Tell your friends to do the same. Now I appreciate you listening, and I'll talk to you soon.